Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today is a very exciting day because we get to start a brand new colony. And before we begin, I like to highlight the build number and I'm also going to drop the colony start save file into our Discord. So if you're not a member of our Discord yet, you know what to do. The server invite link is in the video description. Without further ado, we'll hit the new game into survival. And this time we're actually going to start on a spaced out map. And that has to do everything with the type of playthrough we're going to have. Because in this playthrough, we are colonizing every single planetoid with at least two duplicates. Now, for the first time in a long time, we are not going to be playing max difficulty or any sort of absurd challenge. I am very, very happy about this. But I do figure that we would start on one of these lesser played asteroids. Now, each one of these starting planetoids starts with its own unique challenges. For instance, some of them may not have oil. Others may not have any reed fiber. And interestingly enough, unlike the default start, your main planetoid can have a bunch of different features. For instance, here in the Quagmire's asteroid, it starts with mixed boulders, a frozen core, and medium boulders. But regardless of how we start, we're going to make sure that we put multiple duplicates on every single asteroid. Some of them are going to be a little bit more difficult than the others. And that's how I'm going to base our selection here. For instance, once again at our Quagmire's asteroid, you can see that there's a total of nine total asteroids in its cluster. Whereas if we go right over to the Moonlit cluster, there's 11 asteroids. And it looks like most of these more difficult starting locations have the full 11 asteroids. So we're going to be choosing one of those for maximum colonization. And I think we've decided on the Moonlit Cluster, but I don't think we want to make it too easy by being able to flip through this and be like, oh yeah, we're definitely going with Metallic Caves, which gives you a bunch of extra metal ore. So I think we're going to be silly and just click this a bunch of times, say a random number like six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is what we get. Needs to say, it also randomizes all these other asteroids as well. So it looks like our starting asteroid is going to come with a frozen friend, and is metal rich. I'll take that one. Here's our starting settings. All easy peasy. There's the world gen seed if you're ever curious. We'll also be posting our coordinates in the comments below and you can see the world gen seed is right here. But if you ever want to duplicate this, you copy this and paste it right in the coordinates. We're going back to a traditional digger digger and researcher start. Reason being is this is going to be a very late late game. It's going to take upwards of 2000 cycles to be able to colonize every planetoid and reach for max sustainability. So we're probably going to be sitting around 40 or 50 duplicates total. And as the standard, the duplicates in our colonies will be named after our, our YouTube and Patreon members by seniority. So the first three up are Miko Nala, John Mann, and John Archer. And we begin. Now before I get too far into this, we're going to make sure that we give it a good pause and we're going to save this. And as I said before, we will definitely drop this save file into our Discord. So taking that initial look reveals a few different odd things. First of all, there is polluted water absolutely everywhere. Looks like cobalt ore is going to be our starting metal ore. We do have some fresh water up here, which is very important. Ah, but look at this. There's a little bit here that we can get our initial cycle one bathrooms up with. But also interesting is look at the fossil right next to the starting location this is definitely going to be interesting we also have a bunch of polluted mud we'll also check out the star map click on our home colony ugina is that how we pronounce that and once again it looks like randy is out to destroy us there is absolutely no water on this colony well save from the natural gas geyser that we can then put into some generators and get the polluted water out but that's a little thin we're gonna start right over here be able to get us enough material to build some ladders and i think we're just gonna put the ladder system right here for now now obviously with this sort of start all these pockets of polluted water it's not gonna be the cleanest but we'll be able to fix it up a little bit later for now we need to get our bathrooms down some research going some cots we have plenty to do i was originally looking at putting some cots over here because it looks like we're gonna have to put ladders everywhere we have to go to start with of course we could probably build over here for a little bit but this mud will start to deteriorate if we mess with it too much and then all of a sudden we have huge masses of polluted water falling on us but we have to be very careful when we're digging over here for instance this tile here is oxalite 
So if we dig out the tiles around it, eventually all that oxygen will be consumed and once again we'll lose all that water and it's going to mix with the polluted water. Additionally, if we dig out this dirt above this mud, this mud will crack and fall and once again, same sort of splish splash problem. So instead, it looks like we're going to be digging out through over here and getting into all sorts of this polluted water problem. But since we're going to do it, we might as well do it right. We're also going to dig out some of this area, drop this water into here and then try to clean it up afterwards in the meantime though it's very tight in fact this polluted dirt is the only thing saving us from losing our fresh water supply we're going to dig down here that way this water will have some place to flow to and then we're going to try to dig all of this up as well i don't think we're going to be able to avoid polluted water on this colony so we might as well start with a sort of polluted water tank and get access to some beautiful beautiful cobalt ore and then finally, we'll end up putting a bottle emptier there to be able to mop this up. And we're going to try to put some nice tiles right here. And that way we can still dig down and hopefully make this a sort of sleeping area. And yes, all this beautiful polluted water right now is germ-free. Let's see how long we can keep it that way, huh? Incidentally, we already have three dupes with hypothermia because of all of the digging inside the polluted water sorry but it, it just had to happen and wonderful hypothermia gives you a minus five from science machinery construction cuisine and gives you a little bit of sneeziness eventually we'll be able to click on this polluted water but we're not going to do that quite yet because yeah it stinks having all the polluted water bottles but it's almost already bedtime so i want to try to get those cots up as quick as possible oh well this is a problem the fossil requires hard digging and of course we don't have hard digging yet let's go to plan b Speaking of the hypothermia, it, the temperatures around here actually look pretty controlled, hovering around 22 degrees. We've got our cots complete. Yes, it's not exactly five-star accommodations, but it'll do for now. We're now turning our attention to getting the research station going and, with any luck, a battery and a wheel. In just this short wire run, we're already down to 399 cobalt ore. Something to keep an eye out. I do see this cobalt here. And a couple of veins through here. But other than that, well, I guess there's a little bit up here. We're looking kind of thin. And of course, more polluted water is draining just as we thought it was going to happen. But this is okay because we now have our tank here. And we'll get all this mopped up and eventually put in the bottle emptier. But day one is day one priorities. We now have bathrooms, cots, and research. It's now bathroom and meal time. On the menu is going to be the nutrient bars, of course. And then the swamp chard hearts. Here in this messy pit of an asteroid, that's the default food source. The question is, what are we going to go to? I'm seeing all these bog buckets, and that's probably going to be it. But as the star map showed us, we don't have any vents and geysers producing any polluted water. We could also go into early fish fillets. There seems to be plenty of fish to get something going. The issue with the fish fillet, though, is going to be the algae. There does seem to be some on this planetoid. But yes, you can feed your fish seeds but you have to get them started on algae and then once they're tame then you can kick them over to normal seeds i mean that's a lot of fish starting off with research we're definitely going to go into food but i think because we're going to be on the wheel for a little bit we need to get that jumbo battery it just saves so much time on the wheel the issue though is while the original research station takes dirt advanced research is going to take water and you can see here we're already down to about four and a half tons not to mention, if my theory is correct, there's not going to be a lot of sand on this planetoid. So what we see is what we get. Which makes even more sense to go with the Paku because then we can take that polluted dirt and eventually get sand. Now we're going to go ahead and put more tiles up here because if you've ever taken a look at these polluted dirt tiles, their density does reduce over time because they do emit polluted oxygen. Which is great for oxygen production, but not so good for floors. And as we can see, there was a bunch of mud and sand here, so this entire thing has now collapsed and dumped all the polluted water right in here into our beautiful water tank. In order to prevent that water from going elsewhere, I'm going to put a quick brick here because we don't want the water flowing over here. We want it to stay in this little area. But since everything's a mess now, we might as well build a proper water tank somewhere as well. Yeah, we have one world of a mess. And we don't have to worry about any time being spent at the research station, well, because it's flooded. I don't think we have too much of a choice. We need to get unflooded. So I think we're just going to put a hole right here and let all the polluted water just drain into here and we'll deal with it later. Well, that can't be a comfortable way to use the bathroom. 
Now, in the course of that giant mess, we've ended up with a little bit of polluted water into what is now our only source of clean water, at least that hasn't been completely overran by polluted water. So we've enabled auto bottle here to try to get all the polluted water from this tile, drop down here, we'll clean this up and then make this a water tank. Unfortunately, we need to drain all this as well. That way we don't have problems with it in the future. Our first printing pod comes and goes, and while I was really looking at this pay, just because they're a pay, I think we're just gonna grab the pufflet eggs. Maybe we do some puff ranching sometime in this series. It goes to show you how small the starting asteroids are on spaced out colonies, because yes, that's already space. But since we're up there, we might as well drain some of this, huh? I was looking at it and realizing, since we're making this giant mess right now, we might as well drop this tank and this and just cut it all through here and let it drop into here. Then we're gonna seal it up and put a nice little water tank. But we eventually have to get up over there and it'd be better to deal with it now, huh? All right, this is starting to look a little better. We have this little beginning little fish tank here. I don't know what we're gonna do with it quite yet. We're also digging out all of this polluted mud and regular mud because we're gonna have to eventually get into the sludge press, which separates mud and polluted mud into dirt, polluted dirt, water, and polluted water. And it makes sense on this planet toy to use all that polluted dirt, turning it into polluted oxygen using the sublimation station. We finally earned a skill points. So now we can actually get through some of that fossil. And I think we'll dig down in here and we'll put some proper bedrooms and then fix up this bathroom area a little bit as well. And that way we can get the morale bonus for using a proper bathroom. Now we're trying to get all the water out of here and separate it from this polluted water. And I think we're going to do the trick where if we put a tile right here, it should force the regular water up. We'll see how it works out. And just like that, we can now sweep up some of the regular water. After a cycle's worth of work, we've managed to get all of the water separated. With all the polluted water out of here, we can finally drop this tank here gonna fall right into here which it's not a lot of regular water but i think it's gonna do we've got the supercomputer down starting on some of that advanced research specifically on the food and ranching side just in case we do decide that we're gonna do the fish ranching we also have a basic mess hall here i know it's not a great haul but it's more than enough for what our dupes need right now we have our latrine and a barracks and an odd cot being built way over here. Who knows how it got there? But look at this. Fairly close to the colony is a nice, beautiful gold volcano. That's about gonna do it for today's episode. The things I'm looking forward to hearing about in your comments, specifically for the next episode, is going to be what do you want to do for food? The fish are a great advantage because they'll be able to produce some polluted dirt, although in very small quantities. I'm also thinking bog buckets because of the plentiful amount of polluted water here. Not to mention the fact we're going to be going into natural gas production, which is going to give us that polluted water, which we can then feed to the bog buckets. Needless to say, though, this starting planetoid is not going to be able to sustain a lot of duplicates, unless, of course, the next planetoid has plenty of water, in which then we can ship it over using the supply teleporter output. Either way, I'm very excited for this series. I had a blast recording this episode. I hope you're looking forward to it as much as I am, and I'll talk to you soon.